old McCall freezer here. This thing ran on 502. I peeled off the data tag there and looked up the information on it. And the uh, running load amps on this thing, with an MCC of 1.4 is 14.9. So we're checking the superheat here just to see what all we got going on. And we're already running pretty low on the superheat. We're on pull down. We're at 77 degrees. The amperage is higher than what it's rated for. Rated for, like I said, 14. I'm pulling 17. Uh, the thermostat had been replaced, and we kept losing thermostats, so I put an isolation contactor, 120 volt coil, and built a little cover for it so that the uh, contacts weren't destroyed inside of the thermostat. The thermostat can only handle about 16 uh, amps, I believe it is. And this thing was pulling uh, 19 at startup. So we've already got a superheat issue. The thing's 502. It's really, really old, but it's in fairly good shape. And so he doesn't really want to replace it. So he just wants to maybe replace the compressor. Well, the question is, okay, what all are we going to have problems with if we do this? So it's, uh, as you can see, it's in fairly good shape. These are expensive for those that are in the outside world. Comes in through that little aluminum shield there and shoots the air out which I don't smell any, uh-oh, I think I might have found our problem. I think we might have lost our fan. Oh, look at that. They said it got hot smelling. Well, that would do it, and that's also what would make our super heat really low, no fan. So let's uh, open the top and see if the fan's not running. No, fans are running. Oh, uh, well, do have the TXP there. Oh, look at that. There, they're not running. There sure as heck ain't no switch. Well, it could be that little delay fan delay too, though. Being cold, not cold. Cold, not cold. Yeah, this one right here. Which got defrost termination on it. Oh, look at that. It's nice. That's that. That's not like dangerous or bad. That's lovely. Here's me, whoever did this didn't know how to use a crimper. This poor looking crimps and uh, none of them are tucked in there. So we're currently getting down to temperature here. We're at 43. We're at 13.9. Rated loads 14.9. So things are starting to look better once she's under a uh, normal idea of conditions. So I spoke with one of our other guys that, you know, he's got a crap load of experience. I figured, you know, I'm going to run this by him and see what he thinks. Um, he, he wanted to make sure that fan delay is working. You know, my thought was, hey, the fan delay, if it, uh, even though you got it, the fans aren't running, sure. But now you're getting some liquid back because you're not boiling it off. But like he explained... You know, you're not bringing the heat across it, so you're not building the pressure. You don't build the pressure, same as a pressure reducing valve. So you're keeping your amperage down. So good old Testo. Every time, I love it how they fail on camera. Freaking junk. All right, so let's see if I can get back here and get to where I was at. The batteries are cutting out now. It's like you bump it and the thing shuts off. So the evaporator's running about one degree. We're on a 27 degree superheat, which is a high, but we're not at box temperature yet. We're only at 41. So we're going to wait till we get closer to box temperature and then recheck our superheat, see where it's at. Um, I'm thinking maybe we should go ahead and replace that fan uh, time delay termination switch. I mean, it makes sense because our compressor does pretty good until it goes to startup. I'd like to maybe see a CPR valve on it, but it hasn't had one ever. Why does it need it now? And what's causing this weird smell that they're smelling? Because uh, right now I'm not seeing it. I had that defrost up 20 minutes, four times a uh, 24 hour period. So I'm going to go ahead and take it back to maybe about 27, 28 minutes. Usually it's in the early 20s, it usually hasn't melted. It's not like they're in here a bunch, and we're in a back room here where there's not like, you know, this ain't the kitchen area, it's the back room, so there's not a crap load of infiltration from heat. Um, the thermostat, at least now, it's only pulling less than, uh, I think, 0.2 amps or something like that. Um, but, see if we can get that superheat adjusted. 
and we may go ahead and replace that fan control first and see how that goes. Because I, I don't want to replace the compressor if we don't need to, and it'd be nothing worse than putting a new compressor in here and end up having issues just to have them call back again. So I really want to make sure I cover all my bases before we have this issue, possibly again. Um, but yeah, it's, that's where we're at. We're getting down there. So as soon as we get there, we're going to adjust that TXV if we need to. Obviously, our superheat's going to drop to nothing. I also had my setting on 502, which is supposedly 404, so we're going to watch and see what that does for us. There, it's coming back up now. It's got some air flow through the coil. Now it's going to hunt because we just all of a sudden got the air movement through the coil. So it's going to flood and go, flood and go. It'll settle down here in a minute. Okay, so we went ahead and pumped it down. I'm not hitting temperature very quickly. And I took it down to negative two, and it's already risen up to there. I think we got valves that aren't holding. I mean, you're supposed to chest it by pumping it down on the suction side, but I don't have suction valve on this, so all I can do is it on the receiver. And uh, you figure we're cutting it off there. All you have is vapor. And it should have gotten most of it out, and it's just continually rising up. So it appears to me we've got the valves going out, the amperage was higher, it came down now that we're kind of getting closer to box temperature. But everything here just leads me right to the compressors being the issue. I'm going to recommend we add a sight glass to this thing along with a new fan delay. We'll go ahead and put a compressor in that has PoE in it, keep it with 404. The TXV seems to be half-ass working. Uh, the adjustment kind of has been nothing but a problem since I've messed with it. I shouldn't have probably touched it. Um, but the way that's rising just tells me that we likely have either valve leaking through the receiver or we have valves leaking in the compressor. I, I, we got issues. It's not 100% certainty, especially when it won't make the smell because we still have the smell we got to deal with. We uh, have yet to find out what exactly caused the smell. No smell has been noticed yet. I mean, it could have been the compressor wasn't starting, and the burn smell could have been from the start relay. It's just one of the things you get so many questions. It wasn't here when it happened, and it's not recreating the problem right here for us. I really don't want to replace the compressor. I think this thing should be replaced, but that's not going to be an option. So we're just going to have to do what we got to do, try to make the best of it, and go from there. I'm going to recommend those things. We're going to wrap this thing up. If you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time, guys, we will catch you on the next one.